This video is brought to you by my first ever full-length guitar course, Listen and Play, where I'll take you through my step-by-step -step method for learning to play guitar by ear. If you want to learn more, check out the link at the top of the description. How exactly is it that good guitar players can look down at their fretboard and instantly see every chord and every scale in any key? Well, the trick is to utilize systems to do all the heavy lifting for you so that you don't have to go through the tedious process of memorizing each individual thing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I go about visualizing the guitar fretboard. So this all starts with creating a movable skeleton where no matter what key you're in, you can look down at your fretboard and you can place that skeleton that's gonna be the same in every every single key on your fretboard and instantly see all of the chords and the scales that exist inside of that key. So to do this, we're gonna combine two concepts that I've talked about in other videos. One of those is the chord roadmaps and the other one is the home base. And we're gonna really look at very simple versions of these because like I said, we're building a skeleton here. The idea is that this is something that you can flesh out over time because it will tie into every other thing you learn about caged, triads, more scales, pentatonics, all of that stuff. It all just ties nicely into what we're learning here. One thing you will need to know is the note names on the low E string and the A string. So we'll start things off with one of the chord roadmaps and you might already be familiar with these, but basically what we're doing with a chord roadmap is we are playing a major scale and we are stretching it across two strings. And this is gonna give us all of the chords inside of our key. So for example, if I start on this A note right here and we play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that covers all seven notes inside of our A major scale. And if we simply apply the major minor formula, that gives us all of the diatonic chords inside of this key. If you don't know this music theory yet, there will be a video linked below, but the major minor formula tells us that the one, four, and five chords are major, the two, three, and six chords are minor, and the seventh chord is a diminished chord. So now if we just apply regular bar chords to all of these notes, we have every single chord from within this key, which is the key of A major. This last one is always funny because it's diminished. Don't worry too much about it. You're not going to use it very often. But whenever you are playing in the key of A major, those are all the chords that are going to naturally occur. So the nice thing is you can look down and you can follow this nice roadmap right here. Look down and see that is always my one chord. Right on top is my four chord. There's my two, right on top is my five. My three, right on top is my six. And my seven is right there. It's all living inside this nice convenient shape. Very easy to memorize. If I were to slide this anywhere else, the shape itself wouldn't change, but the notes that I'm on would be different, meaning that I would be in a new key. So if I did it from the G note here, I could apply the exact same formula based on my numbers, one, four, and five are major, two, three, and six are minor, seven is diminished. And there are a whole bunch of chord progressions that can be made up with all of those chords. Again, we're just using very basic bar chord shapes here, the E and A bar chord shapes, major and minor. That's gonna cover everything but the seven chord. The seven chord, like I said, don't worry about it too much. You don't have to learn a shape, but if you wanna learn any of that stuff, there will be links below. Now, what we wanna do next is we wanna connect this roadmap with our home bass. And the whole idea of a home bass, it's more of a lead guitar concept, but the idea is to have a scale shape. In my case, I really like just the regular minor pentatonic scale shape and build everything around that shape. So no matter what key you're playing in, no matter if it's a major or a minor key, it doesn't matter. You're always building everything around that shape because with relative major and minors, that's always gonna exist. So if we go to our key of A major here and we look at our roadmap, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our pentatonic scale is gonna live right here, right below it. And this works because F sharp minor and A major are relative major and minor keys. So that means that all the notes and all the chords are shared between those keys. So whenever you are playing in the key of both A major or F sharp minor, you now know all the chords that are available inside of that key. and a pentatonic scale that is attached always right there with that pinky onto this first note. 
again, we're just using the pentatonic scale here, but that means that that includes our major scale, our minor scale, our blues scale. All of these are all living inside this one shape as you learn it, right? You begin to flesh the shape out more, but I can take this and I can move this into literally any other key. So let's go up even more. Let's go up to the key of B major. So that would mean our roadmap would start all the way up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is all of our chords in the key of B major. And right below that, we would have our pentatonic scale for the key of B major slash whatever our first finger is on, that's gonna tell us our relative minor key. So in this case, it's gonna tell us G sharp minor is our relative minor key, and where our pinky is, B major, that is our major key. So that scale shape there. And again, feel free to break into anything that you know is connected onto that shape. And you can truly slide this anywhere. It's always gonna work. As long as you line things up for the key that you are in, whether you're finding that key yourself by ear or someone is telling you that key or you just know what key that song is in, you just have to line up that root note with whether it's a major key. If it's a minor key, then use the pentatonic scale as your reference. So if it's G minor, we put that on our G right there. We put our pinky in the normal pentatonic position spot like this. That's G minor pentatonic. Well, because it's relative to this note right here, which is a B flat, that means that B flat major is the exact same key, same chords, same notes, which means our roadmap is just right there. It's so handy to be able to memorize a framework like this because you will always look down at your fretboard, see the most simple version, right? I'm gonna see just my basic major and minor bar chords and I'm gonna see my minor pentatonic scale shape. All things that I'm familiar with. But as I improve my skills and I learn more and I kind of build out my skills and stuff into new scale shapes, into new types of chords, into the caged system, into different other variations of just your regular bar chords, you can simply just add those on. The skeleton itself doesn't change. And so when I'm playing, this is what I'm seeing first. This is what, when I look down at my fretboard, I'm seeing this basically light up on my fretboard in the key that I'm in. I'm seeing that first, and then I'm building into more advanced things from there. Now, one thing you might have noticed is as we climb the fretboard into other keys, we kind of start to run out of space, especially for that chord roadmap, right? We were in the key of B major there, but if we keep going, let's say we want the key of D major, for example, right? Well, if we go all the way up to our D note, it's all the way up here, that would mean that our roadmap would be like, which when you're applying chords is kind of unrealistic, especially if you're playing an acoustic or something like that. So we have to come up with a second skeleton in the same way we come up with a second roadmap. So the second roadmap is going to, instead of finding the root note, the starting note of that major scale and that key on the low E string, we find it on the A string. That's why learning the notes on that string is just as important. So for a D, for example, if I go up here, a D is on the fifth fret right? Just like that. And what I can do is I can play a major scale again. We run into one problem, which is that instead of going up, because that's going to give us totally different chord shapes, and we're going to stray away from just our regular E and A shape bar chords, we are going to go backwards. So I'll show you what I mean. So one, two, three. Now four would be there, right? If we were going up. But like I said, we don't want to use those shapes. So instead we go down. So to play that note right there, we play the lower octave of that note instead. So now instead of our four being right above like that, it's below and back two frets. Our four is there. Five, six, seven. So it is gonna take a little bit more memorization, but it's still very nice and easy to see and visualize, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we just apply those major minor bar chords with the major minor formula. So one, four, five, major, two, three, six, minor, seven, diminished. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Again, diminished, don't worry too much about that one before returning back to the one chord. And once again, we can attach that home base, that minor pentatonic scale right into this roadmap. And in this case, it's not gonna be living below it. We're actually gonna do it right here.
And if you think back to our first skeleton, what note is this that my pinky is on? That's a D note, right? And there's a B. So B minor for a relative minor and D major, right? But because we're using the different roadmap, it's just living in a different part inside of this roadmap. And it's actually way comfier to kind of jump into as well with this other roadmap. Because if I'm playing, I'm right in this scale. So you want to memorize both of those skeletons. Then before you start fleshing it out and adding other things, you wanna be able to use both of those frameworks in a whole bunch of different keys. You can cover all 12 keys with this. So from here, there are a whole bunch of different directions that you can go. I'd really recommend you watch my lesson on playing riffs and licks between your chord changes. It basically puts all of this stuff to work for you in a musical way. So if you wanna check it out, I'll have it linked in the middle of the screen for you now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.